Hello everyone and welcome back to Phasmophobia. Now it's been a very long while since I played this game, but recently they have done the biggest update they have ever done with the game. It's called the Ascension update, I think. And they have basically reverted everyone back to level 0 or 1. Um, completely overhauled all of the items to have tiers and yeah, everything is different it's a completely different game now as far as i'm aware haven't played any of it yet as you can see the screen is on the showing it all completely so we'll show that um yeah i haven't played it for a while and i've been waiting for this it took a bit longer than i thought it was going to for when it was planned to come out so it's been even longer but i want to get back into it now starting from fresh is a good time to start playing it and i want to play a bit more get into it so we'll just read this bit here Welcome back. Due to the progression system being completely replaced, your previous le uh, level, legacy, and equipment values have been set to zero. Uh, you've been fast tracked to one prestige level to allow you to continue playing the game with all the maps and difficulties unlocked. When you're ready, head to the next screen to customize your new unique badge based on your legacy level, which will be visible on your player model's arm. Once you've saved your badge, that's it. You cannot be changed, so choose carefully. So yeah, everything has been changed. It's going to be interesting. Going to be interested to see how this changes the game, what kind of things this does to the game. I'm looking forward to playing it. So, yeah. But today, we are going to be doing the training or tutorial kind of level type thing. Because apparently they've changed that. Which I don't think they've ever changed in the whole time of playing this. I've, I think it's always been the same. So I want to check that out, see what that's like. Uh, just a little brief thing and a little way of getting back into the game because like I say I haven't played it in a long time Everything's changed. I need to kind of get a bit refreshed into it So let's get into that if you enjoy the video and aren't subscribed yet Please do so any of the things you feel like doing and that being said let's have a look at this badge So we don't have too much on here unfortunately because the one thing I regret is I'm on level 744 I would have liked to get to a thousand but we didn't so we'll see what we can have I quite like red the hands with the red look pretty good actually oh but those the upside down crosses do as well actually this is a I thought this was going to be a very simple thing that I'd just be able to come through really quickly, but I quite like that actually. I didn't get any accents because again, I wasn't on a high enough level. I think we'll just go with that, something basic. Sure. Once saved, your badge can not can never be changed. Sure. Is this a little quiet? Let's, uh... No. I suppose it can be, that's fine. Whoops. What am I doing here? And we also, I was having a quick look around, we also have a plaque. So, presented by Ghost Hunting Distribution in appreciation and recognition of your progress and achievements before the date of August 17th, 2023, and level 744. Now, does this actually show everything new? Because does so these are the new tier items oh but there's still some chests here does that mean new items maybe and that says restock expected so are they going to be changing that so we hopefully we'll be seeing all of these kind of things but yeah this is what they've been doing changing every item so there's three different types for each one but we will get to see that at some point here we are level one no money absolutely nothing so yeah want to do the training um, because apparently it's different as far as I'm aware and just a refresher for myself um, to see what the items are like um, so yes Create a warehouse for you to master your ghost and skills. Watch what you were saying, the ghosts are listening. So it's so it's a warehouse, so it's not just the just a house. 
happy to wander into. That's interesting. Welcome to your first day at Ghost Hunting Distribution. Read the whiteboard to get started. I can do. Okay, so welcome. Here at Ghost Hunting Distribution, we'd like to welcome you to, to our training facility. To start, grab a flashlight behind you. That sounds very echoey. That's a new sound. You can toggle flashlight with the use or um, if equipped or special if it's in your infantry. And yeah, there's some information on what to what your buttons are. This is. Is there anything missing? So interact, use. That's how you turn on your hand item, your held item, E to grab, which we did, place is F, can't place that, drop is G, cycle, Q, special T, so that's if it's not in hand, journal, is there anything new here, I don't think there's any new ghosts or anything, there's such an echo in this place, I quite like it, and see to crouch. It doesn't tell you about sprinting, but maybe it'll come to that. Uh, you can toggle flashlight. Yeah, I've said that. You can cycle through your held items to change which one you are holding if you carry three items at once. When you're ready, grab the key on the right, then interact with the keypad on the left of the door to open the truck and move to the next section. So far, everything seems the same. Now we are on the basic flashlight. No other inf uh, items or anything available to us. Oh, this is nice. Actually, got a warehouse just for this. Very interesting. I like it. it. It's better than just wandering into the house and actually, like, kind of doing a job. I like how it's preparing you by putting you in somewhere. Ghost room. Your first goal, goal when entering a haunted location is to find the ghost's favourite room. This is a room where the ghost will spend the majority of its time. To find the ghost room, look out for open, uh, for open doors, items that have been thrown, or sounds coming from the area of the location. While playing high difficulties, ghosts can change their favourite room when wandering. To open a door, interact with it, and move forward. Okay. So, uh, actually, don't want to mess with things. So, are we looking for? This is room one. I'm sure I'm hearing things get thrown. The door to the next section. And that cup's been moved. So, is this the ghost room? Yeah, this is this has got to be the ghost room. So that cup and this, uh, what what's it called, has been thrown. This has got to be the room, but I'm not seeing anything. So I saw that that cup just got thrown. Yeah, so this is the ghost room. So doors obviously aren't open, but it's throwing things, and that's how we know. Okay. And we can't go back. Sanity. Each investigator has their own sanity level, represented in the truck by a percentage on a screen when playing in a team. You will also have an average sanity level. Uh, several things can lower your sanity. Standing in the dark and the ghost events and abilities. You can store your sanity level by using sanity medication. Now that's changed from sanity pills because before sanity was only just a pill um, but with the ones I've got now there's drinks and certain stuff like here and I think the highest here is an injection like an adrenaline shot or something uh, so try drinking one using a bottle below it'll take a few seconds to replenish try it out grab one below then use it you should see your sanity increase on the screen to the left sanity medication will will have different amounts of restoration depending on the difficulty you are playing. 
here we are. And we are already at half sanity. So we take that. Okay. Good job. Okay, and that's a different way the sanity goes. It doesn't just like shoot up. It doesn't say, oh, well, you get 40% of your sanity back. So here it goes. It's doing it at like a couple each time, about 2 to 3% each time. How far does it go? Okay, that was about 40%, I think. About 40% sanity because of the of that. I'm guessing we're on easiest difficulty. Interesting to know. Uh, I think we're done there. Okay, what are we looking at now? Lighting. To keep your sanity stable, you should stand in lit rooms or areas as much as possible. You can turn lights on using their switch. Aim at the switch, then interact with it. Each location has a maximum amount of lights that can be turned on at once. If you exceed this number, the fuse will trip and turn off every light. Is that new? I think you could turn on all lights before. So they've made it so you can only do a certain amount of lights, so you can't just run around and turn every single light on in a house. Uh, trip and turn off every light. You can turn the fuse box back on by interacting with its switch. Try tripping the fuse box by playing with the lights to the right, then turn the fuse box back on. Okay, was that something now? I don't actually know because I didn't really go around turning lights on and off all the time. So, off, on, and alternate fuse box. Wait, that's what the fuse box used to look like, right? Does anyone still have that fuse box? Or is that just like a little reference to how it used to be? Well done. Oh. Okay. But we can turn it back on. Okay. Maybe that isn't new. Maybe I just never realised it. Maybe I never realised that turning on too many lights shut the fuse box off. Okay. And here we go. Here's the new items or the new tiers of items. So the electric electromagnetic fields or EMF. In a normal contract you will only need to find up to three evidence types but for this training we'll be showing you all seven. EMF spots are left behind on almost everything that a ghost interacts with. These hot spots last around 20 seconds and can be read uh, and can be read with an EMF reader. Grab your EMF reader below, turn it on with views then move it towards objects with a ghost has recently interacted with. Some ghost types will leave strong EMF hotspots if your EMF reader is displaying strength of seven or higher, this is an evidence. Upon your journal, open your journal by pressing the journal button, click the evidence tab at the top of the page, then mark EMF five as checked. And, oh, we do turn it on as well. Okay, that's cool. I actually like the little clicking. And it's a geese field meter model 100X. So we just need to wait for something to be thrown, I guess. It's moving a little bit. Is that just like general nice work. magnetic fields in in just the thing? What else got thrown? I don't want to have a little bit of a look around. Will this ever go up, like above the five, to tell me how it works? It seems like at most it's going to four. Okay, this is this is pretty cool. I like I like this. This isn't. I can walk around with this. EMF is my always first go-to. Um, go-to item. I always liked the EMF. I was always a fan of it. Um, the noise in the noises on it, I think, will help. And it says over five. 
and on a line there is a bit of a line after that so I think you'll notice if it goes off I would like to see it but that's not bad I'm okay with that and for tier 1 I'm, I'm quite happy with how it looks now as far as I'm aware with the tiers everything we're used to in the previous in the um, previous build or stage of this game why isn't that shutting? Have I bugged that door? I think because I was standing in the way I bugged it. No? Okay, never mind. Um, as far as I'm aware, every item is that we know of is tier 2. So there's a new tier 1 and a new tier 3. Apart from torches which had tier 1 and 2 that we already knew, um, I think everything else will be different to that effect. So... Yeah, everything we're going to be seeing here is going to be relatively new. Uh, and then ultraviolet UV. This has also been changed from fingerprints to UV. I think in the journal it says ultraviolet. Because it's not just handprints anymore that came as the evidence. Uh, so ultraviolet. Some ghost types will leave behind UV handprints on doors, windows and even footprints on the floor. If they walk in some, some well placed salt place these um, to find these listen out for paranormal interactions on these objects then grab your UV light interact with uh, interact activate it with use then shine it around to see what prints have been left if you find UV handprints or footprints make sure to note them down in the evidence page of your journal lastly if you shine UV light onto a print for long enough it will become charged allowing you to swap to a camera and swap uh, snap a quick photo for some extra cash so we'll turn off that and okay so wait handprint oh the the liquid inside of it wobbles as well that's cool okay how does this work is that no just be right next to it I kind of want to charge it just to see what it looks like when it's charged no that's not charging okay Oh, there's handprints everywhere on the roof. Footprints? There is footprints as well. Okay, and footprints, yeah, so footprint will always be with you. Okay, yeah, and footprints do count as an interaction now before they didn't. Handprints, footprints. It's kind of a shame that. Wait, can I turn off lights in here? Maybe that's why I can't see them. No. Ah, damn it. I would like to have seen these charged. Just see what it looks like left behind. It's not going to work, though. Okay, that's fine. That's pretty cool. So I can stay there. Wait, why isn't that... Oh, do I need to write it in my journal as well? Why isn't this working? Oh, I thought these were like shoes, but they've got actually footprints on them. Whoops. Okay, let's see if. Why can't I leave this room? So I put in the journal ultraviolet. Why isn't this working? Have I done something? Have I broke the tutorial? Um, hello? Hello? What's happened? What's happening? I think I broke it because I went through this door a little funny. Um, okay, do I need to come back to here? Okay, I 
I think I'm going to have to leave. And we'll try that again. <laughs> I broke the tutorial. That's fine. <laughs> we can get into it quick enough. But then again, that's actually showing that UV is the glow sticks that are tier 1. So that's a little different because everything else is tier 2 that we know of. So to have that as tier 1, it's a little bit different. Some jobs for you. Okay, let's get back into the train then, and we'll try that again. Welcome to your first day at Ghost Hunting Distribution. Read the whiteboard to get started. Come on, let me out. We know all this. <sighs> yeah, things could be slightly different. Maybe it's this room. Is it room one? What room is it? Head through the door to the next section. Okay, that's implying that I know what room the ghost room was. I heard something get thrown, but I didn't see where it was. Ah, there it is, room three. <laughs> I saw that, thank you. Uh, sanity? Let's not get stuck on this door again. As long as that was the problem, because I'm not. Nice work. You didn't even give me a chance to get the reading before you told me nice work. Okay, maybe keep this with me. Maybe that's something I wasn't doing. Okay, that door's shut this time. Okay, is it because I didn't look at the footprints to the door? Maybe that's what I didn't do. Again, I don't know if it was because of this door. I didn't leave it right. I want to get into the room as quick as I can so the door doesn't shut just in case that is what happened. Anyway. So, next one. Freezing temperatures. Ghosts are known for making the area around them colder. But some ghost types will push these temperatures below freezing. When navigating around a location, you may notice your breath being frozen in front of you, visualized by a cold cloud of air. If you find this, it may be worth checking the temperature of the room accurately. To do so, grab a thermometer and walk into each room, then check the temperatures, temperatures as they adjust. If you're looking for anything below freezing, uh, if you find freezing temperatures, mark it in your journal. So this is something a little different. Before, you used to be able to just walk into a room, and if you saw... Um, a cold breath of air you knew you were in the room because that's the only way the air the breath was um, because you saw your breath and you knew it was freezing temperature with this I believe in um, they've said that the, um, the cold breath isn't necessary to zero it just means you're in a cold room and also in weather types where it's snowing or something you're more likely to have cold um, the breath so you need to have a thermometer it's something to actually make sure you use the thermometer um, to actually see what um, the temperature is in the room so it's good because it's making you have to use the item it's going down a little bit but it's very slow I don't know if it's worth staying in the room until it gets to zero or just quickly go to another one see if it changes the speed of it going down I'm gonna just try that 
this is still going down, I think. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Yeah, this is still going down. That's staying about the same. Yeah, I think I'm getting further away from it. Yeah, I'm getting further away. Maybe go back to the front room. Looks like the further we are, the warmer it's getting. Let's try this room again. No? This one? Yeah, this one's going down. And we have to wait for this to get to zero, I guess, before it tells us. Is this still going down? It's hard to tell on this. I'm going to need to decide on what items I want leveling up first. That's going up. I really have to look. Yeah, that's going up. Where the hell is this cold room? This is going down. Uh, probably, what, six degrees there? That looks like six. So that's not a cold room. Now that's going up. So it's not there. What about in here? Wait, this is going down. I thought this was... It looked like it was going up when I was in here last time. No, this has got to be it. It's getting pretty low. And there we go. So confirmed to be ghost room is here. I'm just going to throw my things now. Now, dots projector. Uh, okay, that looks quite different. The dots are a lot closer in by the looks of it. And you can see the ghosts a lot more clearer. So dots projector. Dots projectors let us see things that normal light does not. Sometimes using this light will not re um, will reveal a small flicker into the paranormal world. Several ghost types can be revealed with a dots projector. All you need to do is find them. Grab projector, turn it on with use and aim the light where you think a ghost may be. If you see a ghostly silhouette appear, then you found some evidence. Try and find try to find a ghostly apparition in the room to the left. Okay. Oh, it's such a tiny little pen. Uh, so, turn you off. Okay. Oh, it has a little click as well. I like that. You may not be able to hear that, but it's pretty nice. Ooh. Okay. That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, anyone that's seen me play a couple of games, I love ghosts in sheets. I think it's just really effective. That's cool. Um, so what am I Good job. For? What did I find? I was looking at them the whole time. What was different? Oh, even with a torch, that's really visible. That's really cool. I mean, it looks better without the light behind it, but you can still see it clear enough. Uh, now I don't see them. Dot projector. When a ghost reveals itself in its dots form, you will walk. It will walk towards the closest player if they're inside the same room. You can use this to get. Those particularly shy ghosts come within range of your dots in red lights. And are these the same pictures? Yeah, it looks like the same pictures. Okay. Um, so they'll come towards you. It won't be the same as they were before. Where they used to kind of just run past it. That's interesting. So a lot of this I'm going to have to learn when I first play it. I'm going to have to figure out how it all works. Because, ooh, okay. <laughs> Love that. Ghost orbs. Often when filming paranormal evidence with a video camera, investigators have found unexplainable uh, flecks of light that slowly drift across their footage. These have been named ghost orbs. To find them, grab a video camera and turn on night vision with use. 
during contracts, you can place the video camera down and view the camera feed from the safety of the truck. Search around the ghost room and look for any small flecks of light moving around. If you find one, mark it in your journal. And some little pictures of ghost orbs. That is a tiny screen. That is going to be very hard to see. Um, okay. Again. I, oh, there it is. I see it. Nice work. Hi. Yeah, this is another thing I think is going to need to be upgraded fairly quickly. So there's the ghost orbs. We do see ghost orbs clear enough on it. I don't know how it'll be when you're exploring a whole house or something. But it doesn't seem too bad on the screen. It's just really small. You're losing, you're losing a lot of area more so because of how the camera is ghost subs are gone okay so far i don't think i was worried at first about how this was going to work with just the tier ones of things i didn't know how well they were going to work um but they seem fine it, everything seems like it's going to be working effectively enough I don't see it being, oh, this is going to be impossible to play with so far. Uh, just some things are probably going to need to be upgraded, take priority, like the monitors. They are very slow, so that needs to be a lot better. And a camera could do with a big camera, a bigger screen. But so far, everything seems manageable. Uh, ghost writing. Some paranormal entities will interact with more objects than others. In several reported cases, ghosts have been known to write vague messages in books if left long enough. To get ghostwriting evidence, grab a ghostwriting book and place that place it down somewhere near the ghost. After some time, the ghost will either throw the book or write in it. For the latter, note the evidence down in your journal. Okay. I mean, yeah. Of course it'd be the latter, because if they throw it, it's not ghostwriting. Or is it saying it has to throw it and, then, and write in it? So they did do little showcases of what certain upgrades and tiers and things are going to be. I don't think they did one for ghostwriting, so I don't know how the books change. I wonder if they've got new writing in there as well. I'd like to see some different notes. Do I need to put more books in here? I think I will. Oh, there we go. Well done. That's cool. It's like a magic book floating in the air. Okay, that's just a scribble. I want to see if we can get something else written in there. So I'm going to just move all the books onto this table. What's this one say? What is that? That's new. Help me. And... I don't know what that says. Okay, I was about to walk off saying it didn't look like they were going to do another one, but that's just scribbles. Okay, never mind. Okay, I mean, the one writing was a little different. Spirit box. Okay. Uh, EVP recordings or spirit boxes uh, are radio devices to find, uh, designed to scan through different frequencies. Possibly revealing some paranormal audio amongst the static. To use a spirit box, grab grab one below and turn it on with use. Make sure that all room lights in that area are turned off. When you see, when you can ask, then you can ask the ghost questions in hopes of a response. Try using "Where are you?" If you get a response, the indicator will flash white, and you should hear a voice that's unique amongst the radio frequencies. If it flashes red, your question was heard, but you didn't get a reply. That's really good. Um, because the other spirit box, I think there was a sign with a cross or a ghost, but I never understood if that meant that it you spoke and nothing replied, or if there was just something not in a room. I didn't really understand it, but that seems like a really good thing with a red flashing to say your question did work, but nobody replied to you, and a white just say that's very simple. I really like that. That actually makes tier one really good. Um, enter the next area, find a ghost's room. Then try it out. 
yeah, that actually makes it really good. So, where are you? Okay, so it did hear me because it was red. Yeah. Where are you? Where are you? There it is. Where are you? Where are you? How old are you? Where are you? Where are you? Wait, what's my... What's my um, push at all? Okay. Um. Where are you? How old are you? Are you friendly? Where are you? How old are you? Where are you? How old are you? Wait, this thing's being thrown there though. Where are you? How old are you? Are you friendly? Where are you? How old are you? Where are you? Where are you? Why isn't this working? Are you friendly? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? How old are you? Okay, um, let's try and change the push to tall. See if that does anything. Where are you? How old are you? Okay, uh, something's weird's going on. What am I on? Where's the push to talk? Audio? Hello? Hello? Okay, so my voice isn't working in the game by the looks of it. Hello? 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 I don't know what's happening. Uh... I don't know what's happening here. Hello? 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 Where are you? Hello? I don't understand. Where are you? How old are you? But it's got to be recognising it because the red button's on there. So I say, where are you? It's not doing it. Yes, it is. Where are you? Where are you? How old are you? Oh, wait. I get it. <laughs> I'm dumb. <laughs> Where are you? Don't start from your home. Good job. It told me. Now, that's something that definitely didn't happen before. I don't think you had to use the spirit box in the dark. Um, that's something I'm going to have to remember. So, can you do it with your torch on? Where are you? The far reach. Okay, and they've changed the voices as well. It's... How old are you? Of a young... Young. I do, I do catch some of it, but it's a bit... I was so confused then, but at least I know it's working. That's a good thing. Um, yeah, that threw me off. Santa's still looking good. We've had no things. Hunt. Okay. During contracts, ghosts can initiate an attack on you in your and your fellow investigators. These attacks will have a chance to occur once your sanity has reached an average threshold of 50%. Some ghost types might attack earlier or later than this. Demons um, are a lot earlier. I don't know about any others. 
I'm not that great on knowing exactly what does what. That's something I'm going to have to pick up. Um, so we'll see if we can figure that out um, the more we play. Depending on the difficulty you are playing, you may have a setup timer. This is normally displayed in a large LED click in the truck like this one on the right. This will stop your sanity going below 50% as well as prevent hunts. When a hunt starts, the exit doors will lock and the ghosts will start searching for you. Turn off your equipment, hide it in a locker or crouch behind something tall, um, tall and wait until it's over. Into the next room to simulate a hunt. Something's not quite right. You better hide, quickly. Uh, okay, turn that off. That was a close one. Congratulations on completing your training. You can exit through the truck by interacting with the keypad. Okay, and that's that's exactly not quite right. You better hide quickly. What? what? That was a close one. Congratulations on completing your training. You can exit through the truck by what? interacting with the keypad. What did it double hunt? Is that like a test for someone so you're not just... Okay. And enter the truck and use the keypad to exit. Okay. So other than me breaking it because I stood in a door, that's what I assume it was. Maybe it was because I just didn't look at the ghost orb. Ghost orb. Um, maybe it's because I um, didn't look down right to see um, the footsteps by the door for it to open. Maybe I didn't trigger it right, I'm not quite sure. but. Oh well, that was that was good tutorial. That was um, it was a lot more in depth than the other one, um, as far as I remember, because I haven't played this that for a long time. You just went into um, the first house, Tanglewood Drive, and just kind of went in, and it said, "Oh, try taking this in, try taking that in," and you just had to experience it yourself. It didn't go into as much detail with the items. Um, checking out the tier one items, it was very good. Uh, made me see which ones I like, which ones I think I'm going to have to upgrade when I get a chance. So, yeah, that'll be interesting to see. That's going to do it for this episode. I hope we'll be coming into this um, a lot sooner. Um, I would really want to get further into the game and I want to play it a lot more. So I will be doing that. Um, don't know when, but it shouldn't be too long because I want to actually get into a proper hunt and just experience this game in its new glory and see how it works with these new items with the ghost types and everything like that really looking forward to it but yeah that's gonna do it for this episode thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed and i'll see you next time bye